These mountains belong to Maswala National Park, a peninsula of northeastern Madagascar. The park contains over 2,300 square kilometres of lowland and coastal forests, as well as over 100 square kilometres of mangroves and coral reefs in the adjoining sea. This makes it the largest protected area in Madagascar, which is itself the fourth largest island in the world. Teeming with life, its unique range of natural habitats and geography undoubtedly conceal endless wonders. In November 2005, I was offered the opportunity to join a team of ecologists on an intrepid expedition to this remote region to monitor its dung beetles. So there I am, the one with the crazy ginger afro thing. And as a maths grad turned student of ecological theory, I'm certainly no dung beetle expert. But I went on the trip with an appetite to learn more. We haven't even left the nun yet. We had some problems uh, with the passports because one of the passports was a little bit torn or something. So we decided we're going to try out another plane because we didn't really like the last one. I think now because we're having to change planes so we have some time maybe to get a new, a new passport before the next plane. The drama of leaving Finland. Usually people might think there is some drama when you're arriving in a country so far away like Madagascar. They got that way! Yes! Wow, it's a world record. That's a new record. The fast, the new fastest passport. passport. <laughs> Yeah, I can't say why, but I just like the feel of this plane. So we, we spent the night in Paris, we, we went to the airport, there was no troubles, we had a look around, we couldn't find any nice perfumes, uh, but we're, we're on our way, we're on the plane, we're, we're going to leave Europe behind and we're heading for Madagascar. Right, I think I'm going to get a bit of sleep, would be a good idea. When it rains in Tananarive, Madagascar's capital city, it does it properly. The downpour that we witnessed was so heavy that it was a little hard to understand how the many Citroen 2CV taxis didn't get simply washed away. You gotta love those 2CVs. We had to spend a day in the city, a lively, colourful place in order to make our final preparations, wait for flights and visit the zoo. Then we were off, boarding the Air Madagascar flights bound for the northeastern coastal town of Maroon Centre. As we flew up the eastern coast of Madagascar, it was hard not to be awe-inspired, looking down on the vast blankets of rainforest. At some point, the plane crossed over a stretch of sea, where you could see coral reefs adjoining to a luscious island. At the same time, it was not uncommon to see channels of smoke coming from areas of rainforest that were being burnt down to clear land for agriculture. Such slash and burn farming is a deep and widespread problem in Madagascar, and seeing the fires firsthand was a candid reminder of the complex social and economic issues that are inextricably linked to conservation science. It was necessary to spend a night in Marouan Setra, I tell you, it really is tough when you learn that on your wintertime business trip, you'll be staying in none other than the Coco Beach Hotel. So how, how small is the small bed here? This is a small bed. And one small? For, for two persons. But this is uh, Ah, oh, I see. Yeah, yes. Yeah. You know, this place is just because of the university regulations. Regulations that the supervisors are not allowed to sleep with their students. It was finally time to leave the pleasantries of civilization behind. The only way to get to our proposed camp in the forest was via a boat trip on an allegedly stormy sea. Disappointingly, however, the reality was so gentle that I almost fell asleep. I've heard the term biodiversity hotspot mentioned about Madagascar, but I'm not really sure what this means and why is Madagascar 
its biodiversity hotspot. Well, Madagascar is considered to be one of the hottest uh, biodiversity hotspots uh, on Earth. Uh, in other words, a place uh, where there is a very large number of uh, species of animals and plants uh, and many of the species which are here are only here. And the reason why Madagascar is uh, such a hot biodiversity hotspot uh, is the, in the first place the great size of the island and great diversity of um, yeah. uh, climate, uh, geology and also the isolation is very important. So Madagascar has been isolated for more than 80 million years from other continents and, and therefore there's been a, a great time for new species to yeah. evolve here. As well as in the coastal forests, we decided it would also be very interesting to monitor the dung beetles at higher elevation in the nearby mountains. High elevation brings new vegetation and it had been conjectured that dung beetles may also be affected. We planned an expedition to last three days taking us to the top of a nearby mountain this begun with a scenic trip up a river in dugouts. The serenity of drifting along the river on these high tree trunks, watching life go by on the banks, was very pleasant indeed. Oh yeah, that is, until we noticed the leak. During this particular trip we are hoping to find out about the species and communities of dung beetles which occur here in northern part of uh, Madagascar where we have never ever okay. been before and we, we can expect that the communities are different here and indeed we already have found uh, substantial differences to those areas which we know better. Yeah. Uh, partly because uh, the lemur species that we have here are, are different and, and we have a different composition of mammals and, and this is then reflected in the species composition of dung beetles. So.